Hello, this is Will McDonald from Love Connection, and welcome to our video for, I'm just joking, uh, uh, your chapter review on probability. So the first five questions are all about vocabulary. Now the first one appears to be something in Scandinavian of something. It says, Ent of denim to Sven results for which the outcome of one event has no effect whatsoever on the second event or another event. What is it? Can anyone just scramble the, the Slavic language there and tell me what that's supposed to be? Jaden? Independent events. Right. So it's a vocabulary words. Independent events. Independent events are events where the first one has no effect on the second one. An example of that would be if you flipped a quarter and then spun a spinner, the results of the head has no results on what's going to happen to the spinner, right? However, an example of a non-independent event would be if I had a bag of eight red marbles and two blue marbles, and I said, what's the probability of pulling out a blue marble? Everybody would say, well, it's 20%. But if I pulled out a blue marble and said, what's the probability of pulling out a blue marble again? Well, if I don't replace that blue marble, the probability of that second blue marble goes down because it was two out of 10 marbles. Now it's one out of nine. So the probabilities change depending on if one event affects the other one. The second one, Malapis X represents all possible outcomes of a probability experiment. What's that decoded? Anybody? Alexis. Sample space is correct. And the one we see the sample space created for us the most is if we do a table, like we have heads and tails and heads and tails, this would be your sample space. These are all of your possible outcomes. This is also called your sample space. Okay. Uh, when you do a tree diagram, there's not one already created for you, so you have to write all the different possible combinations together. On miscellaneous is a real situation modeling using experiment. Anyone know what that word is? Simulation is correct, Mr. Ball. And did we do a simulation in class? Do you remember what simulation we did? Who remembers what simulation we did? The quarter flipping, right? We did a simulation for that. And we flipped it 20 times each, times 24 kids. We did 480 flips. And I think, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, the problem, the, our, um, experimental outcome, our, our, our theoretical outcome was we'd hit it 50% of the time. What was our uh, experimental 48 point something, right? So it was pretty close. And if we did it a million times, we would find that that number actually got really, 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 really close to the 50%. Okay. Uh, your portability, uh, the chance of an event occurring. What is that the word for? Tyra. Probability is correct. And what is the formula for probability? What do we say that, to, what is the actual formula for the probability of a single event happening? Remember the formula? Anybody? Pete, do you remember? No? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? I'll give you a hint. FO over. Correct. So your formula for that is your favorable outcomes over your possible outcomes. So in the event of a coin flipping, right, this one up here, our possible outcomes up top here, there's four possible outcomes, and we can see them in our sample space. Our favorable outcome is the one we're looking for. So if I said, what is the probability of heads, heads, right? Looking at my sample space up here, my favorable outcome is only one of those out of the four which means I can then take that fraction, make it into a decimal, and make it into a percent, right? That's what our formula was for probability. Actually, in grade 7 as well, and I think probably in grade 6 when you did. Ven vefela bellower kemena tuo is a successful result in a probability experiment with two words. Brianna of Tarf. Favorable outcome was correct right here so favorable fave i don't know if it's favorable outcome 
And I think if it's American, it, who who spells it with an O U R? Who does this one? Is that Canadians or Americans with the U? Does anyone know? Is the U Canadian or American? It's a Canadian thing. Why do we like that? Same as color. I don't know why we do it. Just to be different. It must be French. It must be because of our French heritage, right? Does French use a U in couleur? Yeah, does it? There it is. That's why. Okay. Question six says two standard six sided dice are rolled. Organize a sample space in a table. So for this first one, this is what it's going to look like. Where's my thing at here? So when we create our table, the sample space is in here. So this is our sample space. In the red box here, what would we also call this? Instead of sample space, we could call it what? Anybody? Bueller? In that red box, so that's our sample space. But in that sample space would be all of our possible outcomes. Thank you very much. So if we look at what the possible outcomes are. Okay, so once you get your sample space done, those are all your possible outcomes. It says organize a sample space in a table. So there it is. B says, what is the probability? What is the probability that sum is equal to 10? So how many of these numbers here, the pairs of numbers, have a sum of 10? Who has an answer to that question? What do you have, McLester? Three of them. How many agree with McLester? Three. How many have no idea what language I'm speaking? How many are still asleep because it's Monday morning? Uh, that's a lot more hands. Okay. Uh, if you look here, I'll just put a little highlighter dot on the sums of 10. This one right here is a sum of 10. This one right here is a sum of 10. And this one right here is a sum of 10. Are there any other ones that have a sum of 10? See ya. Well, that would be product, right? Yeah, so product is different than sum. Those are your basic vocabularies, right? You need to know those ones. So there is only three. So the probability of that event happening is three chances. Those are the possible outcomes. Or sorry, not possible outcomes. Favorable outcomes. My favorable outcomes over possible. So three of them are favorable out of how many? 36. Change that to a decimal. Three divided by 36 is... 0 decimal 0 eight, three repeating, which is approximately 8.3%. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah? Devin, good? Right. So the work you would need to show for B to get full marks, would, you didn't have to show this. That's okay if you didn't show that. Right? You need to show it as a fraction, convert it to a decimal, and convert it to a percent, right? That would be the percentage. Question C says, what is the probability, this is C, the probability that the two numbers are identical? So, uh, identical. So I'm going to use my P outside the brackets, bracket, identical, and brackets. That means a pair that's identical. How many of them are identical? How many play dice games? What do you roll if you roll two... What do you call it when two numbers, when you roll dice, are the same? Starts with a D. Deuce, no. What? Who said it? So who's the bright guy over there? Doubles is correct. So I could have put doubles in the bracket instead. There are six doubles. And if you wanted me to take my highlighter and highlight them for you, I will show them to you. There they are there. Ooh, red and yellow make, or purple and yellow make red. That's interesting. Uh, those are the six pairs out of 36. Does anyone know what that is? Anybody as a percentage? One out of six. Do you know what that is? Is there sure it's one out of six? Yeah, one out of six. So six divided by 36 is 0 decimal one six repeating, or approximately 16.6, or re repeating percent, or 16.6. 7%, right? Because this would be 6666, six, 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 and this one would make this one go up to 7. Okay? And the last one, D, what is the probability that the product of the two numbers is a multiple of 10? What is the probability that that's a multiple of 10? So product is back to what Mr. Bollum just said before. So if I take my highlighter and use green, which of these have a product of 10? 
multiply them together. This one does. Any other ones? This one does. Are there any other products of 10? 5 and 2? Didn't I do that one? 2 and 5? Is a product of 10 or multiple of 10? What's a multiple of 10? Is 10 the only multiple of 10? What other ones could you have? 20. Let's look for 20s. Uh, 4 times 5 is 20. 5 times 4 is 20. Good. What other ones? No, 30. That would be a 6 and 5 and a 5 and 6. Is there any 40s up there? What's the highest product we could have? What's the highest product we can create? 36. So 40 is out of our range. So how many do we have there? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The exact same probability is identical. We have 6 chances out of 36, which we already know is 0 to 1, 6 repeating, or approximately 16.7%. Okay? Any questions on that? Just... Um, everybody just touch your nose if you're alive. Just touch your nose for a second. Just to make sure. Emma, you didn't touch your nose. Okay, you are alive now. Good. Josie? Theoretically not? Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. A coin is flipped three times. That's an exciting statement. Display the sample space in a tree diagram. Now, Mr. Bollum, I think you tried to do this experiment with a table. Is it possible to do three events with a table, or do you have to use a tree diagram? Jaden, do you remember? It's impossible, isn't it? So when you have three events, you must use a tree guide diagram. So here's what it looks like. Let me show you. So with three events, this is what it looks like. The first event, if it was heads, the second event could be heads or tails. And if the second event was heads, the third event can be heads or tails, and so on and so forth. So as I follow this, each branch, it leads me to the combination of three events. So with this tree diagram, we don't have a sample space. But if I was to make one, here's what it would look like. So if you were to make your sample space, there would be eight possible outcomes. And there, So if I just took my highlighter, which is exciting and was to take my highlighter and just do this path here, what would that have shown me, that green path? What was my first coin? Tails. My second coin was heads, and my third coin was tails. That's just one path of the eight possible paths that are there. So what is the probability that all three will be heads is right here. That's one. One chance one favorable outcome out of eight possible outcomes, which we all know as a decimal, because we all know what one-eighth is as a decimal, right? Anybody? Campbell? 0 0.125 is correct, which is exactly what percent? 12.5%. I didn't need to use my approximate because it's exactly, it's a terminating decimal. So I don't need to round it, and therefore, if I don't need to round it, my answer is exact. 12.5%. And what is the probability of, ex, ex, of flipping exactly two heads and one tail in any order? Two heads and one tail. So I'm going to take a new color highlighter. Ooh, this, anyone want to choose the color? Pink it is. Uh, let's look at two heads and one tail in any order. Well, there's two heads and one tail. There's two heads and one tail. Uh, is that the only two? There's two heads and one tail. Is there anyone that are two heads and one tail in any order? That's it. So if that's it, that means there are three chances out of eight, which is zero decimal. Anybody's? If if one eighth is zero decimal one two five, then three eighths would be three times that. Zero decimal three seven five, or 37.5%. Okay. Exciting times. Monday morning in 306. One card is chosen at random from a set consisting of three to nine. Like, who has a deck of cards with that in it? Like, who does that? Who has that? 
I don't have quite a full deck. I got, uh, well, I got all my, well, I got most of my clubs. I got three to nine. Oh, that's excellent. Let's play a game with that. And one six-sided dice. Show the sample space in a tree diagram, or it gives you the option of a table. Now, we're going to do the, the uh, I'm not uh, quite with it test. How many of you did a tree diagram for this? Pete, 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 we go. How many of you did a table? Look at that. Look around the room at all of the more intelligent human beings in this room. A tree diagram is if you are incredibly desperate to waste your time. If you like wasting your time, do a tree diagram. If you don't, then you should do a table. So we have three, four, the five. I mean, this, the, the tree diagram would, would, I would lose my mind. I would lose my mind trying to do this question in a tree diagram. So it gave you two choices, and it was really just the idiot test. If given two choices with this, which one will you choose? And if you chose poorly, you spent an hour and a half making a picture of a tree diagram, where in the end you ran out of space, and then you got frustrated and crumpled it up and threw it in the corner. But if you did this, this took you very little time, and you have all of your possible outcomes. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six rows of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six rows of seven would be how many possible outcomes in there without physically counting them? Use your area idea. 42. So there are 42 possible outcomes. And if you want to know what they are, it's times like this where I realized, Pete, did you really do a tree diagram for this? How much paper did you use? Oh, Regan, how long did it take you to make this thing? How long? Okay. Well, it took me a long time to make this, and that was only doing uh, a sample space using a, a, a table. But it says, what is the probability that the number on the card matches the number on the dice? Take my handy-dandy highlighter. And if I look for pairs, or as Kylie says, doubles, there are four. So probability is a fraction. There are four chances out of 42. Convert that to a decimal. Four divided by 42 is 0 to the decimal 952. 0 decimal 0, 0952, which is approximately 9.5%. Okay. What is the probability that the number, this is C, what is the probability that the number on the card is larger than the number on the dice? So our second number has to be larger than our first number. So again, I'll take my highlighter. This time I will use the lovely color blue because we have been neglecting it. The second number has to be larger than the dice. So there's all of these, the card is bigger than the dice. All of these, the card is bigger than the dice. All of these, the card is bigger than the dice. All of these, all of these, and all of these. So all of those blue ones, the number on the card is bigger than the number on the dice. How many are there? There are, uh oh, how many are here? This is seven, 14, are you sure? 20, just let me add, man. 25, 29, 30, 30, how would you say? Would you say? Is it 32 or 33? What is it? Anybody? Sometimes I feel like I'm uh, that guy from The Walking Dead, and I'm just teaching in a classroom where the students that I'm actually teaching aren't physically alive. They're zombies, and they're just waiting for an opportunity to latch onto my head and eat my brains. Is anyone... How many? 32. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you. 32 prob possible out favorable outcomes out of 42 possible. Converting this to a... 32 favorable outcomes divided by 42 possible outcomes is 76 decimal, is 0 decimal 7619, which is approximately 76 decimal 2%. And D, what's the probability that both numbers are even? I am going to forego the whole highlighter, and I'm just going to circle it. Both numbers are even. 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of 42, which excitedly at 10, 
Which one am I forgetting? Five five is odd odd. Like the guy that said it. Odd odd. Nine chances divided by forty two is approximately zero point two one four, which is what percent? Zombie number eight. What? Thank you. Twenty-one point four percent. Okay. Question nine. Good gravy, God! Are we going to do this whole thing again? It says list all the possible outcomes. So let's have a vote again. How many of you decided this event, this particular thing, required you to do a tree diagram? Oh no, Pete, you did it again. Wonderful. How many did a sample space using a table? Excellent. So all of your possible outcomes, heads or tails, one, two, three, six possible outcomes. Uh, how could you find the answer to it using multiplication? You could take event one, which was uh, two chances, the coin. You could take the second event, which was the spinner, which was three. And if I multiply those together, I get my possible outcomes. Everybody good with that? Wonderful. Yes, McLaughlin. No, you didn't. That's why Regan shook his head and said, no, I didn't. Because Regan is an intelligent young man. Right? What? I know. But as he didn't do tree, tree diagram or table. Yeah, Pete did because he's just he's just a really strong. He likes to do everything perfectly. He does it every different way. Yeah. Any uh, any questions with that one? This one really just the the table just verifies that this answer is correct. This visually shows you there's six possible outcomes and why the product of the two events actually works. Right. This is show. Oh, not this. This shows you why this works. Okay. Next question. Janessa. What is a name you don't hear now? Does anyone know anyone named Janessa? Anyone know a Janessa? Do you know a Janessa, Kylie? Is it a cousin, aunt, uncle? No? Just a friend? So, okay. Anyone have a relative named Janessa? You do. You probably do. <laughs> it's okay. I, I think it's a lovely name. It's a very it's an underused name. So my my uh, request is if any of you have children and you're thinking about girl names or guy names, because who cares? Uh, Janessa is a great name. Okay. All right. It says uh, Janessa won these particular or has a chance on the radio to choose any of these particular prizes. One of each. So you can choose one of the six T-shirts, which really I, I would choose this one right here. That's fantastic looking. Uh, four CDs, which nobody has anymore. If you want a CD, would anyone have a, something to play it on? Does anyone have a CD player? Regan, you have one? And a relative named Janessa? Unbelievable, this question hit you twice. Anyone else have a CD player? You do. Do you use it? You use your CD player. Do you use it? Really? Does anyone ever, Has anyone never seen a CD player before? My house doesn't have one. I don't know if my daughter has ever played music on a CD before. Uh, has anyone ever used a tape player before? You have. A Walkman, do you have one? Would you like one? Does anyone want a, a Sony Walkman? I have one for sale. 250 Will McDollars can get you a Sony Walkman. Does anyone want to buy one? You want to buy one? Josie White want to buy one. Okay. I'll bring it in. You remind me and I'll bring it in. It's a wonderful. It has AM, FM radio too. And I don't know if AM stations actually exist anymore in PEI. I'm not sure. Anyway, back to Janessa. She actually looks like a Janessa. If I was thinking what a Janessa would look like, that's her. How many possible combinations does she have? So, how many of you... Now, this is going to... Do, this, is going to this is the other idiot test. How many of you use a tree diagram? Wonderful. How many of you used a table? Wonderfuler. 
How many of you use the multiplication of possible outcomes? Oh, sensational. So the grade eight now is this. If you take the T-shirt and the CD, and is it a poster? Oh, tickets. And tickets, and you find them as individual outcomes and multiply them together. So there are six T-shirts, there are four CDs, and there are two different concerts. Uh, I personally, I don't know who this one is, but I think his concert would be much more exciting. Uh, you multiply them together, and you get 48 possible combinations. You could, in theory, have the green T-shirt with the crazy guy and this CD. That would be one possible outcome. You could have the green T-shirt with the, uh, I don't even know what language, she'd probably be opera, she, opera concert with the green T-shirt, and this CD. There are 48 combinations you can make, and that's all you had to do for this question. Did anyone have that wrong? Wonderful. Such an intelligent class. Chatty, wonderful class. A travel company is selling a getaway ski package to Whistler that includes a to choice of three hotels, ski passes to either Blackcomb or Whistler, and dinner at one of several restaurants. The newsprint advertisement is smudged where the number of restaurants is listed. However, the ad boasts that there are 42 different combinations. So, how many restaurants? So, let's write this down. So, we have uh, hotels. How many hotels can there be? <laughs> Trivago. Uh, we have ski pass. How many different ski passes can they get? Two. Uh, hotels, do we know? Or not hotels. Uh, restaurants. We don't know the restaurants, so we don't know. We'll put a question mark there. But we know there's how many combinations altogether? 42. So what must the restaurant number be? Seven. How many agree? Regan ex agrees, which is wonderful because my question mark actually kind of looks like a seven, so I don't have to do much more. Everyone good with that? Three times two times what is 42? The answer is seven. Question 12 says a bag contains three red marbles and two black marbles, and a box contains... Four green marbles and one yellow marble. This is exciting. One marble is selected randomly from the bag and the box. And what is the probability of red marble? Or what? Uh, well, let's first look at this one. What is the probability of a red marble from this first bag? Three chances out of five. And what is the probability of a green marble? Mar marble? Four to five. So therefore, ergo, what is the probability of both events happening simultaneously? What would you do? Would you add them together? So you multiply them together, and you would get 12 chances out of 25. 12 chances out of 25 would just a little bit less than... What's the probability as a percentage then, if it's 12 out of 25? Devin? 12 out of 25 is a little bit less than what percent? A little bit less than 80% or a little bit less than 50%? Anybody else want to chime in? What would 50% be? Would this be 50%? 12 and a half out of 25? Yes. yes. So 12 out of 25 is a little bit less than 50%. 48. Same thing. Of course it is. Yep. Anyone have trouble with that one? So again, did we do a table? No. Did we do a tree diagram? No. Did we do a multiplication of favorable outcomes divided by possible outcomes? Each individual event multiplied together to get the combined possible outcomes? Yes, that's what we will do. Question 13 says the probabilities of snow today are in Abbotsford, Lethbridge, and Estefan are as follows. The probability of Abbotsford is 0.1. What in the name of God does that mean? Raise your hand if you can tell me. What does this mean? PA.1 is...
Just 20 bucks for you, sir. Well done. Yeah. This means the same thing as this. The probability of Abbotsford is 10%. Or the one we really want to say, if 10% is a... So this is a decimal, which we've learned. This is a percent. Which one do we want to use? We don't want to use the decimal. Well, we can, but we're not going to. We don't want to use the percentage. We want to use the fraction. So what is 10% as a fraction? So one chance out of 10 that it's going to rain in Abbotsford. What about Lethbridge? Lethbridge is 40%, but we don't want to use that. We want to use 4 tenths, which is this. So this is the probability of the probability of Abbotsford. This is the probability of Lethbridge. And the probability of Estefan is 0.5, which is 5 tenths. What are we going to do with those tree numbers? We're going to multiply them. And we're going to get 20 over, uh-oh, what's 10 times 10 times 10? It's not 30 people. It's 1,000, which is 2 out of 100. Right? It's 20 over 1,000, same thing as 2 out of 100? It certainly is, which is what percent? It's roughly a 2% chance. Now think about this. It's a 10% chance to rain in Abbotsford. It's a 40% chance to rain in Lethbridge. And it's a 50% chance to, re uh, to rain in Estevan. What is the combined probability that it's going to rain in all three cities at the same day? Only 2% chance, right, statistically. Now, that's from a, from a meteorological standpoint. It's probably different because there would be different variables based on proximity to wherever, but 2%. Okay. And then from this, what's the probability? Uh, oh, I, I actually did B, sorry. I did B first. This is B. A would be simply, in Estefan, it's uh, one chance out of 10 for uh, Abbotsford. And for Estefan, it's five chances out of 10. So for both of those, it's five out of 100. This is A. So the probability of it and raining in Abbotsford and Estefan is 5% chance. Okay. Could we have kept them as decimals? Let's check. So instead of doing it this way, what if I kept it kept it like this? What happens when I multiply those together? Let's take my calculator out here again. So if I take my calculator and go 0.1, which is one tenth, multiply by 0.4, which is four tenths, multiply by 0.5, which is five tenths, I get this. What's that as a percent? It's the exact same number we got right over here, right? So you can use the decimal form of probability if you want, okay? The only difference is it doesn't graphically show you favorable outcome over, over possible outcome. It's translated it to a decimal already, but you can use it. Is that the last question or is there more? Oh, look, there's more. Uh, a standard six-sided dice is rolled three times. Use multiplication to determine the probability that a one or a two appears in the first roll. All right, so let's look at the first roll, the second roll, and the third roll. How many numbers are on a dice, on a six-sided dice? That's the easy question for the day. Six. Thank heavens a quarter of you got that one. How many of them are either, on that, those six numbers, how many of them are one or two? Two of them. So two chances out of six on the first for a one or two to appear on the first roll, a one or two to appear on the first roll. A three appears in the second roll. There's one chance out of six for the three appearing on that second roll. And on the third roll, an odd number appears on the third roll. Three chances out of six. I don't know if any of you have ever had a third roll before, but I can't imagine it would be very good. That would be six chances out of 100 and what is 36 times 6? Anybody? Yes. Nobody knows what 6 times 6 times 6 is? Is it 196? No? What is it? 216? Look at that now. 216. No one believe me? So if I go to my calculator and want to go 6 times 6 times 6, how can I do it with one button? How can I do it with one button? Six cube button. This one right here. Look. Six cube is six times six times six, which is 216. Oh, I need the calculator again. Because six divided by 
216. Does anyone know what that is? Think about this. If you have 6 times 6 times 6 divided by 6, wouldn't that be the same thing as just 6 times 6? Yes, it is. Which is, oh, sorry, I did that wrong. But it's 36. Hang on, sorry. 6 divided by 216 is 30. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, I did it wrong. That's why. That's right. So it is 0 0.027 repeating, which is what percent? I'm going to go on a limb here and say Emma, since there's five of you in the room. I'm sure one of you can answer it. Emma? Any Emma? What percent is that? Two point seven. How many agree with one of the Emmas? How many agree that it's not two point seven? How many agree my answer should be two point eight percent? Yes. Because this is zero point two seven 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 seven. Sorry, zero. Which is yes, two point seven, but this seven's gonna become a eight, so it's approximately two point eight percent. Does that make sense? Lesson learned. Never ask an Emma a rounding question. Because there's 17 of them in the room. Right? And the last question is too long, so we're not going to bother doing it. Oh, yes, we will. A spinner is divided into four equal regions as shown. Wonderful. So there's blue, purple, green, and red. A spinner is spun 20 times, and the results are shown in the tally chart. What is the theoretical probability of the spinner landing on blue? Emma. Any Emma. Any any kid's name starting with E. I'll take any E, people. Any any vowel, any person whose name starts with a vowel. Anyone want to answer that? What's the theoretical probability of blue? This is the easiest question I'll give all day. Anyone that's name starts with a consonant want to answer this question? Campbell, what did you say? Thank you. There are four colors. Of those four colors, one of them is blue. So the theoretical probability of it landing on blue is this, which is this, which is this. The questions get harder from this point forward. That was the easy one. From the tally chart, what was the experimental probability of the spinner landing on blue? This is just like our coin experiment. So how many times did it land on blue when they spun it? Three times out of 20, which is 0 0.15, which is 15% of the time. Great googly moogly. Our theoretical probability did not match our experimental probability. Why? Mr. Valet, anybody? Why are those two numbers not the same? Theoretical does never have to meet experimental. Correct. However, the more you do it, the greater likelihood there is of it happening. What could be another reason why it didn't work? The spinner might not be perfectly balanced. It might be equally each one of them might be 90 degrees of the circle, but the spinner might be weighted heavier to the red. Maybe he's holding it sideways, and when you spin it, it has a greater propensity to actually point downwards because of gravity. Who knows? Right? There could be all kinds of reasons. And if a spinner was spun a 1,000 times instead of 20, would you expect the experimental probability to change? Yes. It would become closer to the theoretical. And if it didn't, then you'd have to check your actual spinner itself to make sure that it wasn't something going on with it. Okay? Any questions on those? Wonderful.